Hi, I'm M from 21 Readers. Where the Crawdads Sang is releasing in theaters next week, and as a fan of the book, I wanted to discuss right before the movie is released what I hope the movie will do to improve upon the book, or at least live up to my expectations of the book. This book was published in 2018. It was Delia Owens's debut novel, and it has nearly 2 million ratings on Goodreads. I first read it in January 2020 before the pandemic, and I absolutely attribute this book to getting me back into reading. And then I just reread it for the first time last week in anticipation of the film coming out so that I can refresh myself with the story. And now I wanna talk with you about what things I liked from the book that I think should be kept in the movie, as well as what things do I think need to be taken out and what things they could improve upon from the book to make the movie even better. This video is gonna contain spoilers for the book. I also wanted to mention I have not watched the trailer. I don't watch trailers because I think it spoils too much. So if anything I say has been revealed in the trailer, that's why. Where the Crawdads Sing centers around Kaya from her childhood into adulthood and it takes place from the 1950s into the 1970s in the marshland of the coast of North Carolina. I'm gonna start with things that I hope the movie keeps from the book. One is the beautiful imagery of the marshland. Kaya spends so much time talking about the wildlife, the nature elements around her, things that she notices at a deep sensory level about Carolina marshes. And I think that this is a great opportunity for the film to expound upon that, to really show us all of the sensory things that Kaya noticed from the book onto screen. So the cinematography is definitely gonna be something that I pay attention to since Kaya spends so much time in the marsh that I'm really looking forward to the imagery that this film rings with this setting because the setting is such an important part of Kaya's life. Another thing I hope the movie takes from the book is the characterization of Kaya, particularly Kaya's ability to be self-sufficient, as well as her characterization of the themes of loneliness and abandonment throughout Kaya's life from childhood to adulthood. She is consistently disappointed by others, abandoned by others, and feeling lonely, and she uses the marsh as her refuge. So I'm definitely looking for the film to continue that theme, that exploration of Kaya's self-sufficiency, her resiliency, but also the themes of abandonment and loneliness as she takes the marsh as refuge. The third thing that I hope the film does very well that was executed perfectly in the book is the chilling ending. Reading the ending the very first time I read this book gave me chills and when I reread it last week I wasn't sure if it was gonna hit the same but it absolutely did. There's a murder that happens in this book and we don't find out till the very last page what happens with this murder and who did it and the ending gave me chills both times so I'm hoping whatever changes or improvements that the film makes to the structure of the story the ending still hits and causes chills. Those are the three things that I hope the film keep from the book. The marsh setting, the characterization of Kaya, and the ending. And now I'm going to get into the things that I hope the film improves from the book. The number one thing that the film needs to improve from the book is the structure of the story. There's three things specifically for the structure that I want to talk about, and that is the murder slash trial, childhood, and the romance. In the book, we find out in the first chapter that Chase has been murdered, and then the whole story is told in alternating timelines. We have Kaya as a child, present day for the murder investigation. Kaya as a teenager, back to the present day murder investigation. And then the whole ending of the book is the present day murder trial, back to back to back. I'm really wondering, how is this film gonna be narratively structured? Are we gonna know at the beginning that Chase is murdered or are we gonna hone in on Kyle's childhood first and go kind of more linearly, like childhood, teenager, adulthood, murder trial? I think there are pros and cons of doing it either way. One of the cons of bouncing back and forth is that in the book, by the time we got to the trial, it was very repetitive as a reader because it kept bringing up evidence during the trial that we as a reader already knew about that was brought up in previous chapters. So the trial somehow was super short in that last section of the book yet it felt super drawn out because we kept getting check-ins on the evidence throughout the whole book. So I think if we're working backwards first we need to figure out hmm how much of this film is going to be on the trial? Is it going to be extended upon? Is it going to be pretty short? And when we do get to the trial in the movie are we going to be surprised by all the evidence or are we going to already have known all the evidence because like in the book the police officers and the sheriffs are gathering evidence the whole time. While we're on the topic of the trial I would like to see the evidence a little bit more intriguing. The evidence in the trial is very sparse. Evidence like the red fibers found on Chase's body, the shell necklace was gone, all the footprints were gone and swept up, there were no boat tracks. So it was very sparse evidence to go off of. In the book they couldn't even prove that Chase's death was a murder and not an accident. So I'm definitely wondering is there going to be 
more evidence added into the film than there was in the book to make there be a little bit more to say in the trial. So structurally, I'm definitely going to be looking for one, when is Chase's murder going to be revealed right at the beginning or more in the middle? And also, are we going to wait till the trial to find out all of the evidence that the sheriff is compiling? Or is it going to be sprinkled throughout like it was in the book? And are they going to add more things to the crime scene that were or weren't there to add to the trial? I am looking forward to some type of chilling moment in the trial or emotional moment where she's found as not guilty and it's shown as the townspeople basically trying to ask for forgiveness for how they treated Kaya her whole life. The next part of the structure that I want to focus on now is Kaya's childhood. The beginning of the book is very childhood heavy with Kaya's parents who are absent and leave her as well as Kaya's failed attempt at schooling. And while we do have that front loaded at the beginning of the book, we do get chapters of Kaya's flashback into her childhood throughout. So I'm definitely wondering how much of Kaya's parents we're going to get in the film and Kaya's siblings. And are we going to just get flashbacks of her childhood or is it very much going to be we're only seeing Kaya as a child at the beginning of the film and then never again as she grows up. So is this going to be a linear structure or non-linear? Another thing is more than halfway through the book, Kaya's older brother Jody comes to visit her. I could see them totally taking that storyline out because there's only so much runtime that we have and that's kind of a side plot. So I could see them totally taking Jody coming back out. The main function of Jody coming back into Kaya's life is to relay to Kaya that her mom has died and to encourage Kaya to try again with Tate. So I'm wondering, are they going to keep Jody coming back in? I could see them taking it out if they need to scrap some things, but we'll see. So I'll definitely be looking for structurally how are we focusing on Kyle's childhood, Kyle's relationships with her parents and with her siblings, and if the Jody coming back storyline is taken out altogether. Another family storyline I'm going to be looking for when watching this movie is that really powerful scene where Kaya gets a letter from her mom, but then her dad burns it, but then Kaya saves the ashes in a bottle, and it's one of the first things that she starts for her collection. So I'm definitely going to be looking for that plot point to see if it's kept in or not. Okay, so we talked about the murder slash the trial. We talked about the childhood. And now I want to talk about how is the movie going to handle the romance? So we have Tate and we have Chase. One of my biggest concerns about the film is that it's going to inadvertently turn itself into a melodramatic love story between Kaya and Tate. So I'm hoping with the Kaya and Tate relationship that it really focuses on Tate pushing Kaya to be more intelligent. Like when Tate shows Kaya how to read and how Tate encourages Kaya to send her notes in to be published and how Kaya uses Tate as a gateway to be published. So I'm really hoping that those are the scenes and the characters of Tate that we see the most between Tate and Kaya's relationship. I'm hoping that they stray away from these melodramatic confessions of love, from this let's have our whole future together, from Kaya just wandering out in the boat thinking about Tate and yearning for him. Just because I could see it getting into Nicholas Sparks romance territory and I don't want it to do that. I want the film to be focused on Kaya's resiliency and although Kaya did finally feel love and belonging from Tate at the end and I do still want her to get that, I'm hoping that the way that we get there is from some type of overdramatic scene and Tate can be a part of Kaya's success and Kaya's happiness but Tate isn't the only thing that contributed to that. So I'm definitely hoping that the screenplay treats Tate and Kaya's relationship delicately. I think the book did both of those things. The book had Tate helping Kaya but the book also had some melodramatic scenes them confessing their love to each other and wondering where is Tate and with Jody convincing Kaya that she should give Tate another chance. So I'm definitely hoping they lean more into the Tate supporting Kaya, not the, oh, my happiness is because of Tate. As for Chase, we immediately don't like him as the reader because he's the town's golden boy. He's rude to Kaya and dismissive of her when she's a child. He's basically just trying to have power over her once they get together. So we are going to have uncomfortable scenes with Chase in the film that are going to be emotional. And those scenes do have to happen in order for the murder to make sense. So regarding Chase, I'm definitely wondering, are we going to hate him from the beginning? Or is it going to take until the scene where he assaults her to be the turning point? Or are we as the viewer going to hate him from the beginning. I'm thinking we're gonna not like him the whole time. In the book we didn't like Chase the whole time but then again in the book we knew he got murdered at the beginning so that kind of plays into the thing I was saying about hmm are we gonna know at the beginning that Chase is murdered or are we gonna not know till after the assault scene. Those are the things in the structure that I hope the film improves upon. We have the murder in the trial, we have childhood, and we have romance. I want to talk more about how I hope the ending is handled but before I get to that I'm just gonna make a few miscellaneous comments about things that I think should be improved or taken out. 
One is the Amanda Hamilton poetry, I think could be taken out altogether. Kaya writes poetry under the name Amanda Hamilton and we find out at the end that she is Amanda Hamilton. So I think that they're gonna take that out altogether because I don't think that they're gonna be showing us these poems. I guess if they wanted to keep it in, it might not be directly spoken upon, but maybe if they're at the store, where Amanda Hamilton's newspaper is displayed like sometime in the movie and then when Tate's looking through her stuff at the end then maybe the Amanda Hamilton thing will be found in the notebook so maybe it'll just be alluded to but it's not going to be like overtly said about Amanda Hamilton but I could also see them just cutting that out altogether. The other thing I could see them taking out is Scupper's death. Scupper is Tate's dad. I could see them taking out Tate's dad altogether because this is Kaya's story not Tate's story. I could see them just cutting that character. I think the purpose of Scupper in the book was to to show that Tate only liked Kaya and nobody else and at the ending when Tate went in the police boat I think it was so the reader thought that Tate killed Chase but it was actually just so the police could tell him that his dad died but I could see them just taking that out altogether. I already mentioned I think they could take out Jody coming back. Also while we're talking about side characters I hope that Mabel Jumpin's wife is in the film way more because Mabel is one of the only women that acts as a caretaker for Kaya like when she brings her extra clothes and extra food and so I'm hoping maybe Mabel is working at Jumpin's store with Jumpin so that Mabel and Kaya's relationship is developed more and in the same vein I do hope that that Kaya's relationship with Jumpin and Mabel is developed a little bit more in the film. In the book they kind of just see each other here and there but I'm definitely hoping that that relationship is established a little bit more especially since Jumpin and Mabel are kind of the caretakers for Kaya and I think that if Jumpin and Mabel are the ones that helped Kaya with getting away with the murder I'm also wondering are they going to show those scenes on screen of Tate, Jumpin, and Mabel all being in on it or is it just going to be assumed like it is in the book that they helped her off screen. I think it would be fun to have some type of planning scheming scene with Jumpin, Mabel, and Kaya planning out how she's going to carry out the murder but I could see it not happening as well. I could also see them taking out Jumpin's death. Another thought I had is are they going to have a narrator in the film? In the book we had an omniscient narrator. We would have Kaya doing something or talking to somebody and then it would insert what the other person was thinking and that was a little bit distracting and so I'm kind of hoping there's not a narrator so that we can just follow Kaya but depending on how they do this ending and how far in the future we're fast forwarding to the end they might keep a narrator in but I could also see it being an older woman who's supposed to be older Kaya narrating her story so I'll be looking for if there's a narrator or not. I'm hoping not but if it turns out to be Kaya as an older woman narrating her own story then I might let it slide. Another miscellaneous thing is in general it would be nice to see more more women in the cast or more women supporting Kaya. Like for example, it's mostly men testifying in the trial. So it would be nice if there was a few women on Kaya's side. I know there was two women in the trial. One was the truancy officer and one was the store clerk, but they were very much against Kaya. So maybe they'll keep them in, but they'll have them trying to support Kaya. But the whole town was pretty prejudiced against her. So maybe they won't have that. And maybe it'll just be Mabel, Jumpin's wife, acting as the sole female character supporting Kaya. I definitely hope they keep in all of Kaya's success with writing her guidebooks. In the book, she writes three guidebooks about North Carolina wildlife and she continues to write more. So I hope that that is kept in the film. And I also hope that Kaya's collections and her paintings and her creativity that she shows about different marsh wildlife are kept in. Those are my miscellaneous comments. So now let's get into the ending. The ending was my favorite part of the book and this ending absolutely needs to succeed in the film for me to like the film, I'm pretty sure. So I wanna mention the things that I liked about the book ending and then let's discuss how is this movie gonna handle the ending. So in the ending, we have Kaya being found not guilty in the trial, the author trying to trick us by Tate going in the police boat. So the reader thinks Tate is the one that killed Chase, but it turns out it was just Tate's dad that died. And then Tate and Kaya confess their love for each other. They continue to live by themselves pretty isolated from the rest of a the town they use their money to renovate the shack and then Kaya dies in her 60s and then at the very end of the book after Kaya has died Tate finds under a floorboard hidden in a box a shell necklace which was the shell necklace that Chase did not have on when he died but that his mom said that he wore all the time and it was a shell necklace that Kaya gave to Chase so basically revealing that Kaya did in fact kill Chase and then the book ends with Tate out in the horizon at the fireflies looking out 
wear the crawdad sing. So the shell necklace reveal is the part that gave me chills both times. Okay, so how are they gonna do this in the film? I absolutely think that they will keep the shell necklace reveal in, but it's whether or not it's gonna be a flash forward after Kaya's death, or is it gonna be in the present day where Tate just finds it? Or is Kaya just gonna show Tate the necklace one day? I'm trying to think of what the final shot would be, and I would love for it to be a final shot of Kaya and Tate together, or just Kaya, not Tate. That's why I think it might not be a time jump fast forwarding to Kaya's death is because I want that last shot to be of Tate and Kaya together or Kaya by herself, not just Tate. So my perfect ending would be still being shocked by the shell necklace and the final shot having Kaya in it. So I don't want there to be a fast forward, but if there is, maybe it'll be Tate looking out in the distance, remembering something that him and Kaya did together so that Tate and Kaya can still be part of the final shot. And like I mentioned, there's so many things going on in the film with the murder and the trial, the childhood elements, the marsh elements, and the romance elements. So I need this to all come together into this chilling emotional ending for the film to pay off. So that's going to be my main look for us for the ending is do we still have the shell necklace reveal? Is it going to be in the present or is it going to be in the future once Kaya has died? And is that final shot going to be looking out into the distance? Is it going to be just Tate looking out? Is it going to be Kaya and Tate or just Kaya? The ending is what I will be the absolutely most critical of in my look fors. Those are my thoughts on my expectations for the book versus the movie. I plan on seeing it next week and discussing my thoughts afterwards. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on how this movie is going to compare to the book and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!